What's up, YouTube? It's your boy. Welcome to episode two of Desired But Not Required, where I share techniques that are totally desired but in no way required. In this episode, we're talking about how to tell if you need a DME hold on an ILS or localizer approach. Okay, so before we get started with the discussion, if you haven't seen Toolkit Episode 8 Part 2, I highly recommend it because it lays out a bunch of the foundational knowledge that you need in order to understand what's going on in this video. So as we discussed in that video, when you tune into a VOR, you're actually getting two separate frequencies. You're getting the azimuth frequency, which tells you what radial you're on, and you're also picking up the DME frequency, which tells you how far you are from the station in a slant range distance. The same can be said for most localizer approaches. Notice that I said most. At many airfields with multiple ILS approaches, sometimes the DME is shared across all ILSs. In this case, the DME is not the slant range distance between your aircraft and the approach into the runway, but rather the DME is the slant range distance from your aircraft to the ground-based nav aid that is providing the DME, which may or may not even be located on the actual airfield itself. We will talk about why that could be a problem later in the video. First things first is how on earth do you determine whether or not you need to DME hold for a certain ILS approach or not? The first, and in my opinion, the easiest way of determining if you need a DME hold is by looking at the frequency box. If it says LOC slash DME, what the approach is trying to tell you is that by tuning into this frequency, You'll not only get the localizer frequency, which gives you course guidance, but you'll get DME information as well, which will tell you how far you are from the runway. The next way to tell is that if there's no TACAN channel under the frequency, then there is not DME pairing with this approach. Let's check out the ILS to 17 left at Will Rogers World OKC. Check out the localizer. Just like I said, 110.9, and that is the localizer and DME frequency. For extra assurance, as expected, we have the TACAN channel 46 written below it. So to set up for this ILS, we do not need to DME hold anything. Our course guidance and our distance information is coming from channel 110.9. Now let's check out the ILS to runway 35 at Enid Woodring Regional. Notice how in the frequency box, we have a frequency of 108.3 but instead of saying localizer slash DME, it just says localizer, LOC. Additionally, we notice that there's no TACAN channel written below the frequency. We definitely are gonna have to DME hold if we want distance information on this approach. The next way I can tell if I need a DME hold is I look at the localizer name. For the ILS to runway 17 at Real Rogers World OKC, the localizer's name is IEXR. This is also backed up in the plan view. The primary nav aid will be the heavily outlined box. In this case, the localizer channel 110.9 named IEXR is the primary nav aid for this approach, as we'd expect. Now here's where things get a little more subtle. Have you ever noticed that there's words written next to or on top of the DME? Yeah, I'm talking this DME, like at Arctic, 12.5 DME. Notice how next to it, it's written IEXR. That means that that's 12.5 DME from the IEXR DME equipment. For this approach, we've already determined that we do not need a DME hold. So by seeing Arctic IEXR 12.5 DME, Golf IEXR 9 DME, Hangs IEXR 5 DME, Rurik IEXR 1.1 DME, we can now confirm that we do not need a DME hold because IEXR is the nav aid that the plate is referencing for all of the fixes. Now let's take a look back at the ILS to 35 at Woodring. Remember, we already established that there's no localizer slash DME from the frequency box. So I already have a pretty strong hunch that we're gonna need a DME hold for this approach. Just like before, we go to the plan view and find the localizer in the bold box. The localizer is named IEIU. Next, let's go check out the DME. Right here. 
it says 12DME is off of the ODG Navi. Likewise, we also note that the final approach fix and the initial approach fix for the procedure turn is Garfi, which is also located at 5.9 DME from the ODG Navi. We've now confirmed that we will need to DME hold for this approach. We now need to look back at the plan view to find what is the ODG Navade referencing. There's a couple boxes. We have the Pioneer Vortec up off to the northeast. We also have the Garfi locator outer marker, but the one that we need to use is the Woodring ODG VOR. As mentioned earlier in the video, DME holding off of a Navade that's not located at the airfield can become incredibly disorienting if you haven't done proper mission planning. Let's take for example the ILS to runway 25 at Fort Smith Regional. Just like the other two times, we first look at the frequency box. Notice how it says just localizer, no localizer slash DME. Also, notice how there's no TACAN channel to dial up. In order to fly the full procedure via Ayuwu, we need to arc off the 10 DME arc from the Fort Smith FSM Vortec. We're gonna have to dial up 110.4 for the Fort Smith Vortec, DME hold, then dial in 111.3 for the localizer frequency and dial in an inbound course of 256. Okay, so here's the catch. Notice that the Fort Smith Vortec is located well off of the Fort Smith Airport. The Vortac is actually located six miles to the northeast of the field. In addition to that, the Vortac isn't even located along the final approach course. And here's the worst part. There's gonna be a point inside of the final approach fix while you're low to the ground, where the DME is gonna start increasing without actually ticking down all the way to zero. Another thing to note is that you're gonna to expect to see about 3.4 DME when you hit Glide Soap Intercept. Now granted, this is a very extreme case, but this is why it's very important to do proper chart reading and studying before you go fly this approach in the real world. And there you go. That's my personal technique for analyzing an ILS approach and knowing whether or not I need to use DME hold. I hope you learned something today. And if you did, please share that knowledge that you just got with anybody, not just sharing my videos, but just tell somebody. That's how we all get better as pilots.